Touching every life, I worship you. Oh, I worship you. You are here, meeting every need. I worship you. I worship you. Oh, did it in a motion, they are my sake. I was drawn to what I could not understand. But for the cause of Christ, I have spent my days believing that what he'd have me be is who I am. As I come to see the weaker side of me, His grace is what I'll need. And sin demanded justice for my soul. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Mercy said no. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I would be in had not been for mercy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mercy said.
Unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song. Come on, say, of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are. Let's do that one more time. You unravel me. Say it loud. You unravel me. With the melody, you surround me with a song. Woo! A deliverance from my enemies. From my enemies. Hey. Till all my fear. Now let's shout it out. Say, I'm no longer a slave. I'm no Let us pray. Yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O oh Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. We thank you, dear Lord, for bringing us to this Eucharist this morning. Be with us throughout the Eucharist and help us to do all things to your honor and glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We begin this morning's worship with the processional number 104. 104.
Church of St. Catherine's welcome you to our Mass for the second Sunday after Epiphany. But today is also a very special service, a service of thanksgiving in honor of Her Excellency, the Most Honorable Dame Sandra Mason. We are extremely happy to have you, ma'am, celebrating with us, and also to have our Honorable Prime Minister with us, and our Chief Justice, Sir Patterson Chalterhan, and Lady Chalterhan. A little later in the worship experience, we will welcome all the other persons who are with us for this very special service.
Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world. Grant that your people, illumined by your word and the sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Kindly sit for the ministry of the world. A reading from the Word of God written in 1 Samuel chapter 3 verses 1 to 10. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time Eli, whose sight eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel. Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 12 to 20. All things are lawful for me, but all things are but not all things are beneficial. For all things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord, and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sin against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own, but you were bought with a price? Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord.
next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Words from today's Gospel of John, the first chapter, the 43rd verse. I speak to you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Kindly be seated. I want to invite you to turn to the person next to you and to say it's good for us to be here. And so people on the other side wouldn't feel upset, turn out to the person on the other side and tell them it's good to be here. Amen. In August 2006, I received a phone call informing me that I was being sent to seminary in Jamaica. I was still employed in the HR department of a leading banking institution. I had a few weeks to get my business in order. I had an idea that I would probably have to go, but now it was a reality. Leaving my familiar setting, my family, my young son, and every time Matthew is here, he reminds me of my young son. Leaving my young son and going to the unknown. Even though there was the excitement of going to train as a minister, there was still the anxiety of leaving what I was sure about. A secure job, my home, to answer the call of God on my life. I remember sharing with one of my work colleagues that the time had finally come and I was leaving to go to train in ministry. And the possibilities were that at the end of my training, I would not be posted back in my home country. In fact, they usually just send you back when you are old and your family needed to take care of you or you have died and your family requests that you be buried in your home country. Her response, along with some others, were, what? Now tell me that again. What did you say you are doing? It wasn't because they hadn't heard the first time or understood what I had said. I was not stalling or joking around. It wasn't that I was trying to think of what to say to them. So I told them again. And as I did, I could see their thoughts being manifested on their faces. This is the best dumb idea I have ever heard. When what I said finally sank in, they said, we know you have got to go. We saw God's call on your life a long time, and it's been evident in your work ethics and your involvement and witness in your church. I thought a lot about that phone call as I prepared for today's sermon and the decision to move to Jamaica. I have come to believe that that was a follow me moment for me some 15 years ago. But that follow me move was also an epiphany for my life, a new beginning, a revealing of God in a different way. Not one limited only to my religious pursuit, but one which took me through many of our Caribbean islands, experiencing the culture, the mountains and the valleys, and the hardship of being a priest 
in other places. It was also, my brothers and sisters, the beginning of being myself as I matured in this life journey. And for you who are present here, I wonder if more than not any one of you have heard that call from Jesus to follow me. In a way, when we hear that word read for us in the scriptures and proclaimed from the pulpit, we think of it in a small and restrictive way. We tend to make it only about church and the religious institution and a particular way of life. Very often, because we think that way, it becomes an exclusive and a certain kind of life instead of an inclusive life all about people and applying God's gifts and skills to helping others. What if follow me is Jesus' invitation to every one of you present here to step into the fullness of your life? What if it is the call to become fully alive? Not that I am implying that you're dead, but I am asking you, what is it about becoming more authentic yourself and living with integrity and discovering one's true self. Maybe every time we act in such a way that our lives seem to fit and our words and decisions reflect who we really are, we are answering Jesus' call to follow him. If I were to ask you, have you ever had the feeling that you just had to do something even though you didn't exactly know where it would take you or what would happen? Anybody ever had one of those feelings? You can put your hand up. You don't have to say anybody ever had one of those feelings? Nobody? Oh, oh thank you. At least somebody's on my side. Oh, thank you. Yes. Maybe this morning, as you come, it is an invitation for you to open yourself to hearing the voice of Jesus saying to you, follow me. I know after a year into my training, while on assignment out of college, that the study leave given to me by my workplace and the expectancy of them for me to return on completion of my study was just an ace card. You know how we carry an ace card just in case things don't work out? We can say, well, I finished with that. Let me just go back to where I've come from. I was holding on to it in case things were not working out in my favor. But one day along the journey, it didn't just feel right. It felt necessary, and to do otherwise would be a betrayal of life and myself in Christ Jesus. So I left the security, tendered my resignation, and answered the call to full-time ministry. Maybe that's Philip and Nathaniel. That's how they felt as they answered the call of Jesus to follow me. The joining of the other Jesus men that Jesus called, as we know them, the fishermen, maybe for them it was going into themselves also. For there's something holy and sacred about following Jesus. Regardless of who you are, how old you are, we are your life circumstances. I believe that we are all trying to grow into our truest and most authentic self. That growing into ourselves seems to happen, my brothers and sisters, 
in the following me moments of life. Those moments of decision, those changes, those times when we become vulnerable and not knowing, moments when life becomes larger than before, moments when we step more fully into ourselves. I want to ask you this morning, what are some of the follow me moments in your life? You don't have to tell me. What has been your unknown territory? When have you dropped your neck, stepped out of the boat, and walk away from old man Zebedee? Like the fishermen Jesus called. Or like Nathaniel, who was bold enough to ask, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? And not that he was talking about Nazareth, but Nathaniel was facing himself as he was asking the question, can I be of any worth? Can I really follow you, Rabbi? Philip responded to him, as some of our friends do when we are uncertain about the follow me, come and say, come and meet the man called Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you that these moments come to us in thousands of ways and they often don't make a lot of sense. You're going to pursue that vision to do what? That sounds crazy and impulsive and even irresponsible. But maybe it is all of us being faithful to God's call for us today. Today we are celebrating here in worship, giving God thanks because it's a special Sunday for our president. As later this week, she will celebrate a significant birthday. Dim Sandra has chosen to start her week by giving God thanks for having brought her this far. But the whole challenge of call is for her too. For during her life journey, God's call has been on her life also. And she has answered the call of God to use the gifts and skills he has given her to serve her country and her people in the various roles undertaken by her during her tender young years because she is still tender and young. Dem Sandra, why are your friends laughing? They don't believe that you're still tender and young? I am sure if we were to ask her, I have to get you all along with me, if at five years she saw herself being the first female president for the Republic of Barbados, her response might be no. Let me answer that quickly. However, I am not going to ask her to answer that just in case she says yes, <laughs> which will put me in a spot with my sermon. But her journey to follow me was not only in a spiritual sense, but one which invited her to experience her true self, to evolve into the person she is. And as a mature person of a tender age, she is still experiencing who she is in Christ Jesus. That's why the lessons during Epiphany invites us into a new beginning to come to that special moment of revelation in our lives. How crazy is it when two people look at each other. And I, I see my, my, my commodore here, my boss. And I 
want you, sir, to remember. Do you remember when you looked into the eyes of that lady you married and you said you're the one? I don't know, and these are your words to her, not my words to my friend. You are the one I want to spend life with. I don't know what will happen next week, in the year, or 20 years from now, but I am willing to go find out with you. You want to get married to me? You want to make a life together? And for them, and for him, that was a follow me moment. I am sure Many are hoping for those words from the significant others present here in this year, 2024. Hint, hint to the guys and the gals who are waiting for those words. Or think about, or think about when we come into this sacred space where our president would have come on many occasions for the funeral liturgy of a loved one. And in the midst of tears and pain, in the longing to have that one back, we declare that life has changed, not ended, and even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. How crazy is that? And yet, it's another follow me moment. Have you ever looked at your life then, my brothers and sisters, and wonder what it was all about? Face the truth about yourself, long for something new, or want a different way of living and being? And then you made that change. Life-giving change that fit you and grew you up that follow me moment. Sometimes the follow me moment of life takes us to the paradise of Hawaii, but not always. Sometimes they take us to places we never want to go or to circumstances we never want to face. Sometimes they set before us the subline, and other times they reveal the ways in which our lives have become disfigured. Sometimes there are public moments for everyone to see the follow me. And other times there are moments known only to God and yourself. They can be as adventurous as leaving everything behind like I did and starting over in a new place, or an ordinary follow me moment as you give a piece of bread or a dollar to a homeless person on the corner as you realize that they too are God's creation. It is as much as going home to our spouses and appreciating them for who they are. Keeping a promise, even changing a diaper can be a follow me moment. Each of these moments in whatever form they come can take us more deeply into ourselves and more fully into our lives and ultimately connect us with the holy. The follow me moment then, my brothers and sisters of lies, are less about where we are going or what we are doing and more about whom we are becoming. They touch us deeply and speak to our hearts. So much so that these men whom Jesus called were willing to drop the familiar and walk away. How crazy is that? What are the moments in your life then today that have touched you so deeply and spoken to you so directly to your heart 
that you couldn't do anything but get up and go. We give God thanks today that our president said yes to follow. That even, and I am sure with the negative voices, she saw God's call on her life to serve. And she did that and continues to do that. Follow me then. These moments have a common trend. They ask us to let go, to leave behind, to walk away. It asks us to do something new. It asks us to give Christ a chance in our lives. Please do not think the follow me as some um, little trivial thing that is being talked about, but there are symbols and images that are descriptive of our lives, and they hold the key to us growing more and more in Christ and being what he wants us to be. So as we come today to celebrate, we also hear words that challenge us to look at our lives and to see where because we have become so cluttered with everything else that we do not hear that voice saying to us, follow me. That voice that challenges us to do so much more, to change our thinking. That voice that challenges us to ignore the voices that says, can any good thing come from? But you see, in the East is a good parish, so all good things come from the East. And if you don't agree, you don't have to agree. We are sorry, but we embrace everybody. But we acknowledge the fact that we will not use that negative term, can any good thing come from the East? Because yes, good things do come from the East. And all of you have come to see today. We give God thanks for you. And we invite you to hear the words of Christ, which invite you to follow him and not only follow him, to use your gifts and skills as you follow him to help others. What then will your response be? Will you get out of the boat? Next lesson will tell us of the fishermen. Will you leave old man Zebedee? That is the old way of doing things and try to um, holding on tight to old traditions and so forth. Traditions are good, but sometimes to move forward, we must let go. The promise of Christ is that if we are willing to do that, we will step into the kingdom, into the fullness of life, into our truest and most authentic self. That's what Jesus wants for all of us. It is what I want for myself, and for you. And Jesus said, follow me. The word of God for the people of God. Amen.
Intercession from C. With all our heart and all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace and welfare of the world, for the witness and work of the church, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. For our bishops and all ministers of God's word and sacraments, that they may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the Lord's coming. Let us pray to the Lord. For the leaders of the nations and for those in authority among us, that they may serve justice and promote the freedom and dignity of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, and for all who labor in the cause of human liberation and fulfillment, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the sick, the suffering, the sorrowful, and the dying, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray for, to the Lord. Lord. For our deliverance from the ravages of hurricane, earthquake, drought, or flood, and for a just and proper use of God's creation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For ourselves and all who confess the name of Christ, that we may show forth the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness, into his marvelous light. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. O Lord, our heavenly Father, whose Son Jesus Christ came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, we ask to bless all members of the church army in this our land that may fall in and traverse on and giving themselves to the service of their fellow men they may inspire to reveal your love and so readily minister in your name to the fallen, the friendless, and the needy for the sake of the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercy. Look with compassion on us and all who turn to you for our help. For you are gracious, O Lord of love, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Can you pass the peace across the congregation?
The hymn for the offertory, number 517, number 517. <laughs>
out of darkness into our own marvelous land. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and our angels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your
and in him and through him. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of everlasting praise. Received by intention, your sign is this. Please follow the instructions of our ushers who will guide you accordingly to the commune table.
The hymns for Holy Communion are number 604, 529, and 587. We'll proceed with unannounced. Number 604.
this time we will have the blessing of the youth while we sing hymn number 415, 415. shall now sing, Are You Wash in the Blood?
May we sing Look and Live, ma'am? with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ, the Son of God, gladden your hearts with good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We will now have a special rendition by the choir for the president. I will now render an anthem entitled, Make Me a Blessing.
The next item is the monthly walk-up collection. And for those who are visiting who might not know, every month, in addition to what members of the congregation give, we have a special collection for special projects. So we trust that. A word to the wise is sufficient. Number 672, 672. Morning, church. I'm charged with the pleasant task of welcoming all of you to the beautiful church of St. Catherine in the beautiful parish of St. Philip on the most beautiful island of Barbados. I'm particularly pleased to welcome Her Excellency, the Most Honorable Dame Sandra Mason, President of the Republic of Barbados, of St. Philip as well. So we want to welcome you, ma'am, to St. Catherine's again on this very special occasion. It is not a formal welcome because you're one of us, so we welcome you. We welcome her family as well. I see her, her son, Matthew, and his partner, and her brothers, Maurice and Tony, and other members of the Mason family, too numerous to mention. Yes, there are a lot of them. So we just invite you to stand where you are. Just stand so we can see the Mason family. The whole church might stand, but you know. Right.
we would also like to express a warm welcome on this the very first visit to the Church of St. Catharines, our Honorable Prime Minister, Mia Amor Motley. <laughs> Ma'am, it is a pleasure to welcome you on behalf of your people here. And we hope that is not the, last, the first and the last time. Let us also welcome the, Honor the Honorable Chief Justice, Sir Patterson Sheltonham and Lady Sheltonham to the Church of St. Catherine. <laughs> we want to welcome back our former Prime Minister, the Honorable Frinders Stroud. We welcome you, sir, back to St. Catherine. That warm welcome is also extended to Her Excellency, Linda Chatterjee, the High Commissioner of Canada to Barbados. Ma'am, we welcome you. And she's over there, if you can't see her, she's right over here. The Honorable Dwight Sutherland and Mrs. Sutherland and their son, whose name I don't know, but we welcome you, and we welcome you to St. Catherine. The Honorable Elizabeth Thompson, we welcome you, ma'am. The Honorable Christopher and Mrs. Gibbs. Senator Christopher, Chris Maynard and Mrs. Maynard. Senator Kevin and Kevin Boyce and Mrs. Boyce. Senator Lindell, Nurse, and Mrs. Nurse. <laughs> Senator Monique Tate. <laughs> Senator Charleston Braffitt and Mrs. Braffitt. <laughs> and no, tr no stranger to us, Senator Re the Reverend Charles Morris and Mrs. <laughs> Morris. We also join in welcoming Madam Justice Michelle Weeks. And Madam Justice Barbara Cook Alina. From St. Philip as well. The next person she has left, but I wanted to welcome my former teacher, the most honorable Alice Jordan. But she has gone. She taught, she taught at that great school called the Love School. Oh, no. Oh, she's upstairs, sorry. I think she moved because she doesn't know, want anybody to know that she taught me in 1984. Right? But she has aged beautifully. She's upstairs. <laughs> Commodore Ayrton Sherlin and Mrs. Sherlin. Lieutenant Colonel Carlos Lovell. And in many others that have, whose name I've not mentioned, you're special and you're important as well. I want to also include Mr. James and Betty Wilson from Downs and Wilson's Funeral Home. And if I have forgotten to call any names, please come back next Sunday and I will remind you. Right. So if I've forgotten any names, please join us next Sunday at 7 a.m. and I will welcome you personally. We now have a, a few presentations and I'm going to invite Her Excellency to join us to receive a presentation. Yes. And Your Excellency, so it happens that the first presentation will be made by my firstborn, Joshua Innes. Oh dear. And the second presentation one for our young ladies. 
Makiria. Makiria. Your Excellency, that was Marion Goodings, Marion Jordan's granddaughter. Great, great grand? Oh, great grand. Oh, yeah. You're special to us. We're always happy to have you. And um, we, we want you to remember us too. So we're going to ask you, ma'am, to just break protocol a little bit and open this particular gift. I'm at a loss for words. Good morning to everybody, and certainly I want to say thank you to all of you who heard the call and came. Uh, my thanks go out most profusely to my church. This is where I grew up. I had to come three times a day to, to church, and I said had to, but it proved great for all of us who had to go to church. And, um, I want to say to, today is really special to me, but certainly I'm looking forward to Wednesday, which is the day. You who would have sent me um, birthday greetings this morning, you will notice that I said thank you, but please repeat them on Wednesday. <laughs> I have a great belief in birthdays because I think it signifies gratitude. First of all, you have to say thank you to God for allowing your parents to get together to produce you. <laughs> then you have to say thank you to your parents, for, and especially your mom, who would have gone through those arduous nine months, in some, in some instances seven or less, but certainly um, a case of gratitude to your parents for nurturing you and bringing you here. Then you say thank you to all your, my child, my son, for allowing me to be your mom. And then thank you to all my brothers and sisters who sometimes we fought, but <laughs> as my mom said, fight. But you all rumbled and took the same belly, so you have to look out for each other and love each other. So we grew up in a, 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 um, a, a place of love. And I want to say thank you to all my friends because I believe that all of you, because you've come out, to spend this special day with me, that you are my friends, and I want to say thank you. But of course, my thanks to St. Catherine's Church and to all the congregation and for all those wonderful gifts. Um, thank you once again, and please travel home safely because there is more to come. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, any others celebrating birthdays this week? You can stand and be recognized. I see Jacqueline Brown at the back. And your, when is Jacqueline, when is your birthday? Today. Wow. Yes, ma'am? 
On Wednesday. And what's your name? What's your name? Terentia is on Wednesday. See first here, uh-huh. Tomorrow. Wow. Clear. Today. Okay, congrats. And mine is coming up in November 23rd. <laughs> November the 23rd. Any anniversaries of marriage, anniversary of, I won't say divorce or anything like that, Patrick. Any anniversaries you want to recognize? No? Good. Well, the only other notice is that you're expected to join us next Sunday at 7 a.m. for our normal Eucharist, and I will be there. Right? So please come next Sunday. And on that note, I want to express our gratitude to all who made this service a special service. Many thanks to the members of the PCC, the Parochial Church Council, led by our priest in charge, the Reverend Rosin Harper Johnson. Um, we'd like to thank the choir and the organist, Ms. Shetty Ann Husbands, our drummer, Jaden. 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 <laughs> members of the media, and if I've forgotten you, please come back next week and I will remind you. On that note, I invite Re that's it. Thank you. We will now hold the fort, for he is coming. The final hymn. I just want you to know that a lot of the hymns that were sung were specially requested, and I did justice. And this one, especially please, because today is Church Army Sunday. I don't want to forget my Church Army ladies, because then I will be able to come back next Sunday. So I want to acknowledge them.
serve the Lord. Can you remain standing as we bid farewell to our specially invited guests? We say goodbye. Our au revoir. Our so long. Until they come again.
to cherish and to train. Those years are past and gone so fast. Now we Yeah. 